Hello and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Megan and I make crochet videos and weekend vlogs on this channel. And today I am a little excited because I am trying something new for the first time. I'm finally trying t-shirt yarn. So if you've never used t-shirt yarn before or you're interested and want to know more before you buy some, or maybe you've got some in your collection and just need some inspiration, then this video is for you. So I'll be taking you through what t-shirt yarn I'll be using today, as well as a first impressions, some tips that I can pass on, and two quick and easy patterns for beginners. So I'll be making a jar holder slash cosy and a carry holder for a water bottle. Before we begin, if you have not already, make sure to subscribe to this channel and with that, let's get using some t-shirt yarn. So t-shirt yarn can sometimes be called jersey yarn and is essentially a bulky yarn that's typically made from using recycled fabric from factories like this one. You can also make this yarn yourself, which I'm also interested in, but I'll leave that for another video maybe. Most of the time I've seen t-shirt yarn used for homeware and bags because it has a stronger structure than other yarns, which you can see from this swatch that I've been working on. But I've also been experimenting with a waistcoat pattern with this yarn, so I might show that in the near future too. The t-shirt yarn that I have here is from the brand Paintbox Yarns, which is sold online at Lovecrafts. Like I said, this is made from recycled jersey t-shirts from different European mills and is 90% cotton and 10% synthetic. The colour I have here is 008 light blue, but Paintbox do disclaim that due to the nature of this being recycled, sometimes the colours vary with each batch, which is totally understandable, and I actually think it's pretty cool because every yarn is unique. Now when I researched using t-shirt yarn, people recommend hook sizes from 8mm to 16mm, but I'll be using this 10mm crochet hook as that's the biggest hook size I have. And to be honest, up until this month, I'd never used a hook size bigger than 5.5mm, but that's changing this year, starting with this yarn. When I first used this, I had to adapt my yarn tension just because if you're too heavy on the tension then it can become too tough to work with, so I recommend softening the yarn tension to begin with. And adjusting to a bigger hook size was also something I've had to do, but the perks of using chunky yarn like this with a bigger hook size is that your projects are completed much faster. If we're talking about the price, then this yarn is definitely more expensive than the DK acrylic yarn I usually buy, for example, but you've also got to consider the fact that it's environmentally friendly compared to other yarns, and you also get 800 grams or 120 meters of yarn with this, so it's pretty weighty and works out for the price you pay, I think. As for beginner tips, like I said, tension is a big one and finding one that you're comfortable with. It's also a small tip but when you do use this yarn definitely pull from the centre of the yarn and not unravelling around just because it's so big and heavy that pulling from the centre is just way easier. If you're buying for the first time I would recommend starting with a small project like the ones I'm about to show you just because it is more expensive and if you're not used to working with bulky yarn then starting small will be good practice for you. So with that let me show you the first pattern which is a jar holder. So here I have a standard glass food jar that I cleaned and removed the label off and I'm hoping to use it as a vase for some fake flowers like these. So I'm going to start with the end of my t-shirt yarn here and a 10mm crochet hook and make a magic circle. So to do that you simply cross over the yarn to make a loop, grab your hook, insert it into the loop and pull up the working yarn. I'm then going to chain one and in this circle, I'm going to make seven single crochets. Also crocheting over this yarn end here. And seven. And then with this end that I crocheted over, I'm gonna pull on that and it should close up the magic circle. 
And then to finish this row, I'm just going to slip stitch in the beginning single crochet that we made. And if you're not sure where that is, you can just count back seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm going to slip stitch right here. Then for row two, I'm going to make two single crochets in every stitch around the circle. So at the end of this round, you should end up with 14 stitches. So in the next stitch across, I'm going to make two single crochet in the same stitch. And repeat that all the way around and I will meet you at the end of this row. So there we go, that is the end of round two and I would recommend counting as you go around so you know when you've made 14 single crochets. Now for this next round I'm going to use a stitch marker so if you have a fancy one like this little daisy or you can just use a piece of contrast yarn as well. So I'm going to start the third row by making one single crochet in the next stitch and popping my stitch marker on that same stitch. And then in the next stitch, I'm going to make two single crochets in the same stitch. And then I'm just going to repeat that pattern of making one single crochet in the next stitch, and then two single crochets in the stitch after. I'm repeating that seven times around this row to make up 21 stitches. So I will meet you at the end of this row. So now I've reached the end of that third row and I know that because I've hit my stitch marker. So now if I grab the glass jar, I can see that this base is a pretty good fit for the base of the jar. But if the base of your jar is larger than this one, then just repeat increasing the first single crochet. So the next row would be two consecutive single crochets and then two single crochets in the next stitch. And just repeat that seven times. But I'm pretty happy with the base of this, so let's carry on for the sides of the jar. And to do that, I'm simply just gonna repeat rows of 21 single crochets to build up the sides for this jar holder. So I will remove my stitch marker and make a single crochet in the next stitch. And then I'm going to carry on using my stitch marker just so I know where the row begins. So yeah, just repeat in with standard single crochet rows now until I've reached a length that I'm happy with. Also, another quick tip if this is your first time using t-shirt yarn, instead of just making a single crochet like you normally would by going through two loops, oh, not very smooth, but you know what I mean. <laughs> you might wanna split up the stitch. So for example, I will insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, and then instead of going through the two loops like I normally would, I'm just gonna go through one loop at a time. And that can help just managing using such a bulky yarn. And here I am again at the beginning with my stitch marker. So I'm just gonna turn that right side out actually. and. No need to slip stitch, we're just going to carry on crocheting in the round with 21 stitches until we have a jar holder. So I'm going to carry on with these rows to save you some time and I will meet you when I am almost finished. Another quick tip as well that I've just thought of, if you don't like dividing up the stitch like I did before, then simply just make bigger loops with your hook so then there's more room to pull through the yarn and then at the end just pull on the working yarn to tighten the stitch. Like I said, it's just playing about with tension and finding what is comfortable for you. Okay, so as you would have seen by that last clip, I am pretty happy with how long this jar holder has become. So all I'm going to do to finish is slip stitch where my beginning chain marker is and then tie off. So to tie off I'm just going to chain one, trim the yarn and then pull that through.
The next pattern is for a water bottle carry case or holder and I've really wanted one of these ever since I've seen them doing the rounds around Instagram. So today I'm finally making one for myself. This is my water bottle, it's just a metal canister bottle but don't worry if yours is a different size to mine, I'll show you how you can adjust the pattern. So this begins exactly the same way as the jar pattern. I'm going to start with my t-shirt yarn end and the same 10mm crochet hook and make a magic circle. I'm then going to chain one and make seven single crochet inside this magic circle making sure to crochet over this yarn end as well. After those seven single crochets I'm just going to slip stitch into the beginning single crochet that we made and then following on in the next stitch I'm going to make two single crochets in every stitch around to make up 14 stitches altogether. So I've just finished 14 stitches for that second round and if I hold it up to the base of my water bottle I'm pretty happy with that because it's slightly smaller than the water bottle itself but like I said if your bottle is bigger than this then you would just carry on increasing for the next round or however many rounds you need so for example the next round would be one single crochet and then two in the same stitch but since I'm happy with the 14 stitches that I have here I am going to grab my stitch marker again and mark this next stitch so I know where the beginning of my round is and then just carry on with rows of 14 stitches to build up the sides of this water bottle holder. So I'm going to carry on with rows of 14 single crochets and then I will meet you in a little bit. Okay so I'm pretty happy with the length of this for my water bottle now. As you would have seen from the previous clip, I've left about like an inch, inch and a half at the top so my water bottle can be peeping out the top. So all I am going to do to finish this row is slip stitch at the beginning where that stitch marker was. And now I'm going to create the handle strap. So very simply, I am going to chain a length that would fit around my body. Okay, so I've just skipped ahead and made 75 chains for my handle and across the top here I have just marked the seventh stitch from where we first started to chain, so it's essentially halfway across. So making sure the strap isn't twisted, I'm just going to go ahead and slip stitch in the stitch I marked and after that make a chain one and slip stitch again in the exact same stitch. And then just to give this strap some durability, I'm going to make a single crochet in each chain across to the other side. So I'll carry on here and I'll meet you on the other side of the strap. Okay, so here we are at the other side of the strap. All I did after I made my last single crochet is slip stitch in the same stitch where we started the strap and then tied off. So all that's left to do is weave in the ends and then this is complete. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. If you didn't know, I also have a crochet business and Instagram at Doody's Crochet if you fancy following over there as well. Hopefully this video was helpful for you and now you can make some cool projects with t-shirt yarn. And if you are one of the new subscribers around here, thank you for choosing to stick around and get ready for more videos like this to come. I will see you in the next one. Bye.